Hello everyone. So I'm recording this vlog with a slightly chirpier frame of mind after all the snow that went after the rain. Um, the evenings are getting lighter. The temperature is getting warmer and we all start feeling that little bit happier. Even though we can't still go out anywhere, um, life starts become, becoming a little bit easier. So I thought I'd put some videos together of what we've been doing this last week or so um, and talk about the horses, what tack I'm using, what clothes I like to wear. We've got a little bit of the farriers as well. So while I've been chatting, Sonny's been going around a little exercise that we've put up in the school this week. It's quite a nice little exercise. I like putting a jump on the centre line that you can work on to change your canter lead. Um, the jumps in either corner, you can come off either rein. So you can get the horses working into their corners. It means as a rider, you've got to be looking where you're going and make your plan of exactly where you're going. Trying to work your corners easy. Um, and looking where you're going is priority, really. This day, I'd put a cavus and noseband on Sonny, and he was being a little bit stronger than normal. But I do quite like them running into my hands strong um, because then I know that they're trying to go where I want them to go. So I prefer them being stronger in my hand than lighter in my hand. If they're li too light in your hand, you're not quite sure whether they're going to drop the bridle and go to one side or the other. But when they're really strong in your hand, you can always ride those straight lines easier. So as much as I sometimes have to sit up and really use my body, I find it much easier that they are stronger. So the exercise for Lexi is quite tight because he does struggle a little bit around his corners with his back legs. So it was a good exercise for him. He also jumps a little bit to the right and struggles with his cantilead changes like there. So I almost have to just uh, let his back legs trot for a stride to change. But he did, he did work quite nicely. I have to make sure that I'm fairly square to my fences so then I can ride my getaway. Because obviously how you ride your approach is how you ride your getaway. If your approach is not very good and it's wonky, your getaway will be a bad line. So I always try and try for me and when I'm coaching to make sure that when people ride their approach, it's thinking about their getaway as well. If their approach is on the wrong line, their getaway will probably be a very tight turn. So there, like I say, we just came back to trot to just make sure the canter lead was good. And then when I finish jumping, I quite like to just canter them around the school, make sure the canter's going forward, and then work the trot, and make sure it's all good. If you just jump and then stop, it doesn't really encourage your horse to keep working forward. And then I've had a little bit of a breakthrough. This is me and Romeo, so I haven't put anything on about me and him for a while because I'm just slowly working away, getting my confidence back, making sure my body feels like it's ready to get on the slightly unpredictable ones. But with him, I just had some canter poles in the front. The canter's not great yet round a corner because he's great long and leggy. But I was really pleased with how we just worked around our corners. He stayed straight to his fences, little pop over the canter pole. And he's got such a lovely natural jump. And I was so pleased with this bit of work today. This, this, I was more pleased with this bit of work sometimes than a really good round in the ring because it makes you feel like you are progressing just that little bit. And, uh, and with him, that's really what I was looking for. So I was very pleased with him. And so our farriers, our super farriers, we have um, Stephen Britton and Sarah Pinkney come every two weeks to do our horses' feet because they've probably got nearly 40 horses at our yard to do. So they come every two weeks on a Tuesday and work their way through quite a lot of horses. So Stephen's a master farrier. Um, and I made them this morning, so I'm just putting them on. And why would you put bar shoes on? Uh, well, he doesn't actually need them, so these ones are just purely for practice. But um, bar shoes basically help distribute weight around the foot, um, so they can help with all sorts of like, ailments and conditions, really. So they can be really useful, useful shoes. And 
and is it, these ones are purely just for fun. <laughs> and is this your last year? Is this for your last exam or? Uh, so um, it's for the higher exam which Stephen's got to become an associate and then hopefully eventually a postgraduate. Fabulous. So I've been doing it for a while, but my exam's meant to be in April, but oh. we're just waiting. <laughs> so this is so we burned the shoe on so it's hot so we can see where the shoe fits uh, and you can see this is where the heels are the foot so we're giving the horse a little bit of heel support but this one needs to come out slightly so that when we fit the shoe we can use this burn mark to judge how well it fits and it also makes sure there's a good marriage between the shoe and the foot so when we nail this on there's going to be no gaps and it's going to be less likely to come loose so while the farriers are working on the yard we um we sort of tie the horses up in various places and so they can work on several horses at a time. Nick Wilson helps Sarah and Stephen quite a bit, although he's gone off on his own now. Um, but it's always lovely to see him. Um, we put a roof above this, this yard so that it helps the farriers or any physios. We were all open plan a while ago, but now the roof is on its better. So what shoe is this going on, Stephen? Sassy. Sassy. Third pair of shoes. Ah. So do you make them in a particular shape or style? Yeah, so we've, we've sized them up. I found what size I want. And uh, I'm just shaping up to fit the horse's foot now. From memory, I've just grafted it. So I've got enough foot to burn the shoe onto it. Yeah. And then I'm just trying to shape it to the, to the same the horse's foot. And if it's a young horse, would you put sort of lighter shoes on it or? Yeah, so as light as we can for, for what they're doing really. So it's quite a light concave shoe because she's doing a bit of hacking and a bit of schooling. So a bit of a, a shoe that will suit all terrain really. So now just moving on to a bit of work outside. Um, this is the first time I've come outside and worked since my accident. Really for my own peace of mind, I felt safer in the school. I felt that things might not happen quite so quickly in the school. Um, I'm feeling much stronger now and I love being in our outdoor arena. It's a little bit boggy in some corners, that's why I'm riding in sort of three quarters of it. We've got to redrain it in the spring. But it's, I find the horses, especially the bigger horses, work so much better outside. You can get a bigger canter and they work harder. They tend to get a bit stuffy in the indoor school over the winter. Um, so being out here was lovely. It was a bit windy. but. Uh, it was super to be outside. Um, I've got some draw reins on the two horses, just for my own peace of mind, really. I don't mind draw reins as long as they're used um, in the right way. You know, you can use them quite soft just to keep them balanced. Sonny works a little bit upside down sometimes, so I do put them on him occasionally to, to do a bit of flat work. Um, and really, you know, as long as you don't overuse them, I don't really see any problems with them. Both of my big horses, they work in New Shula Universal Bits. I quite like the Universal Bits because um, I'm quite a basic bit person. I get a bit scared seeing some of the bits and contraptions that you can see sometimes and I'd be worried I'd put them on wrong. So um, snaffles and variations of snaffles are where I tend to stick to and New, new, um, new Shula Universal Bits I quite like. I try and keep Cavus and Nosebands on when I can. Um, just because as long as you do your flat work and the horses are listening to you, I prefer the calves and nose bands. I have got um, a double nose band that Sunny jumps in, um, but um, I quite like calves and nose bands. The new shoe bits work quite well with my big horses. They tend to have breastplates on. As you can see, Lexi has a very big trot, so if, if he doesn't have his breastplate on, his saddle moves a little bit. Um, I like the Lemure Numbness. I'm not matchy-matchy in the slightest, but I did go mad in the first lockdown and buy lots of different colours so they could all have their own coloured numna. So um, Lexi's is grey today. And then I like the fluffy half pads under the saddles. Uh, I, did what, I did look at Russell Guy's, um, he did a study about pressures under the saddles and which pads were better. And the fluffy half pad I think came out on top as still, even though the saddles are well fitted, Fluffy, a fluffy pad under the saddle does spread the pressure about, so I like that. We have Voltaire saddles, which I love. They fit me and they fit the horses really well. So um, I've been riding in Voltaire saddles now for quite a long time. 
bridal wise I love the Montar and the Chocomola bridles for their padded headpieces and their shaped headpieces because I think headpieces can be very tight sometimes I love Caverson nose bands Sonny does have a double nose band that he jumps in um, but Caverson nose bands are my favourite um, they all have slightly sparkly brow bands well they have the, the silver clincher brow bands I have got some sparkly ones that might come out occasionally and nice rubber reins and I love the soft fluffy girths to work in at home I think they're very comfortable for the horses they have the stud guards and breastplates at shows but at home we just stick to the fluffy, fluffy um, girths and then I'll always have tendon boots on as I work them and Sunny and Lexi will wear fetlock boots when I jump them and riding wise, I love riding in the riding leggings these days. I've got various makes and models, but I find when you're in them all day long and teaching into the evening, they're so much more comfortable than breeches and belts. And then my lovely Aquino chaps, my long leather chaps that I've had for over 10 years now, and I've got several pictures of me backing young horses. And Leo, my first bred here, who's 14 now, I've got pictures of me backing him as a three year old in them. So these Aquino chaps I live in from about October to March. And then I've got my base layer on, which I love, my Lord and Lady base layers. I've actually invested in quite a few of those this winter. And then my gilet, which I got from Nikki Hutton at Rug Up Now with um, our logo on the back. So it's especially warm today, even though it's quite windy. So that's what I live in through the winter.